Many thanks for joining us this fine morning here on PLOS TV Africa for all the latest headlines in our newspaper review. My name is Felicity Ezeweke and I have two people here with me to help make sense of the headlines. Um, I have Femi Ido Adegoke, Public Affairs Analyst. Pleasure to have your company. Good morning. Good morning. And of course we have um, Ifi Oji, Policy Analyst. Hi, Glad Christy. to have you join us. Good morning. All right. We'll start with a punch newspaper. Um, the big one here is Residence Boo Buhari. Boko Haram attacks Bornu capital. It has two riders. Uh, sent troops to Sambisa Forest, Lake Chad. Governor Zulum tells president. It also has bandits kill 13 family members, eight others in fresh Kaduna village attack. Quite sad. Right, we'll see what's at the top of the paper now. A panel alleges National Assembly risk possible attacks. Amosu loyalists forgive stoning at Buhari's campaign rally, Abiodu. Uh, we also have the Amoteku bill here, Ogun Ekiti, ESCO's OK, its proposal. At the bottom of the picture of um, Nobel Laureate, Wale Shoinka, that's it on your screen. And uh, Showare, we have Showare Shoinka in court. Judge finds FG 200,000 naira. You find details of that story on page 36 of the paper. More on uh, regional operations. The Southeast Ohanese is looking for operation Obunigwe. Uh, members visited Abdul Razak in private capacity. That's PDP. And of course, the death of legendary high life music star uh, Victor Olaia dies at 89 in Lagos. And the situation from yesterday um, workers stranded at Lagos Ibado Road. Uh, as Lagos Ibado road gridlock worsens, uh, my supervisor was actually stuck in traffic for hours. He couldn't get to work and he had to try and work remotely. Uh, quite an un unhealthy situation there for workers and the economy mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Over to you. Let me start with you, uh, Femi. Which of these headlines would you want to take on? Expectedly, I'm sure you're yeah. looking at that. Uh, um, yeah. I will start with the screamer, which is the resident's boob boy. For me, uh, insecurity has become the second name for us in this country in recent time. And reading that story, I saw that the Boko Haram insurgents, the activity increased from November last year, and they have even like doubled their activity between January and now. And now, and my honest opinion or my view to the to Mr. President, because. Uh, Beduguri in the last election, or Borno State in the last election, was one of the strongest hold, where he got about 85% of the entire vote. And that means he had a massive followership point, yeah. in that place. And now they're visiting and they're booing him now. I feel- they're unhappy. Yeah, they're unhappy with what you're doing. I just feel the a president should go into his inner chambers and begin to ask himself, some pertinent questions. And then he's, he has another four years to begin to tweak things. And yeah, it's, it's less than four years it's now. It's less than four yes. years at this point. And well, I, yeah. yeah so what do you make of the, the very next day after his visit? Yeah. We read it and in the news and there was yeah. another attack. Yeah, it, I read the story, yeah. And just almost after he left, there was an attack on another part of Borno State, even within the capital, an attack from the insurgents again. It just tells us that there is a massive uh, security gap. Because if the Northeast is supposed to be the battlefront, the main concentration area, as this lapses, they come in every now and then, kill 20, kill 30. I read in the story that a few days ago, before they uh, burned 30 people, they actually came and raided a fish um, uh, market, room, my fish market yeah. and killed the people and took their fishes away. So. There's, there's a mess, there's an, uh, message. So the locals should be engaged to gather intelligence. We, no, we're and talking about this local engagement. I mean, I, mean I, I agree with Dr. Femi for sure. I really I, I agree with him. I, I know that if it's, it's certainly a way of measuring the temperature of the uh, nation. If your stranglehold or your, or your place where you have the most support is all of a sudden turned against you. You know, and, and, and it's been very vocal in terms of the booing and in terms of all the heckling and all of that stuff. So, so it, it shows that the, whoever the insurgents are, they are very comfortable 
with their position in that particular state. Because there's no reason why the presence of the, the head of state and the commander in chief of the armed forces should not be able to send a message to them. So it's actually quite a troubling situation. And it shows that they feel in some weird way that they support or they feel some kind of solidarity with the current administration or the current government. So that is actually what, 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 what is most uh, troubling out of everything Which else. other one will you take on? I'll also look at BPE and the belie uh, beleaguered uh, um, uh, um, components of the um, power sector. Uh, I was, when I was, uh, as a young lawyer, we, you know, we had, we had to look, we looked at and, and did, did a very, very deep analysis on the state of the power sector in Nigeria. And that was the uh, birth of the Electric Power Sector Reform Act. And under that act, uh, there was meant to be, there was meant to be this uh, messiah of, uh, in terms of policy, to, uh, to unbundle the uh, beleaguered uh, components of the, the, for, the former uh, NEPA and turn it into PHCN and in that and from PHCN have those uh, units unbundled. So we all know that right now the, dis, the, dis, um, the, the um, distribution companies are under a lot of pressure, you know, because they cannot meet up in terms of their, uh, there's a deficit in terms of any profit they're going to make just because of how high the supply, the gas uh, prices are compared to what the uh, mitos or the tariffs that they've been, uh, they've been uh, mandated to charge. So when you do them, uh, simple mathematics, it does not add up. So that is why they are in the position that they are in. And it, on, on, on top of that, they are under a lot of pressure from the, you know, under the um, government to, to meet up with, make, make profits. They cannot uh, conjure up these profits, unfortunately. And that's why they say that the government is under pressure to, to revert the, uh, the privatization. But I'm, but I'm glad that the, the Director General has, has, has come, you know, has, um, brought people to their senses. I think his name is Alex Oko. And he has reinstated or reminded us what the position was like even before the, what the current situation is with the power sector. And hopefully we can move forward from that. I hope so too. Um, in case you missed it, she's talking about the uh, big one on the front page, just at the very top of the paper. BPE opposes Disco's Genko sale reversal, proposed subsidy. You find details of that story on page 28. All right, um, I want to talk to you about the Shori uh, situation, the update on that. I didn't know what to talk about that. But I can... Okay. Well, it was good yesterday in court for Shore and all his supporters. Um, I think this should send some kind of message to the federal government or the executives as well, that the law of the land is the law of the land. They should have, I think we, we would have uh, uh, avoid all the embarrassment mm -hmm. that the Shore saga brought to this nation if we had done things uh, following the rule of law. Now Shore is even getting uh, fined. Uh, from the federal government, 200,000. Even those in some quarters, they'll say 200,000 is the meg. But me, it's not even the amount. It is the statement that, look, the federal government has had, and they have to do that. Uh, yes. Okay. I, I actually think that what they're saying was that the government, federal government has been fined by the uh, court, yeah. yes. 200,000. Yes. Yeah, make the highlight, let's talk about this legendary Omar Kuba. Oh, is he? <laughs> He's the person that sang yeah. it, right? Omar Kuba. That very, I mean, he sang timeless, the, I, I, I know one of the timeless I think Dr. Fabi is an expert in this particular no, no, subject. No, he's, he's, <laughs> oh, I grew up in a home with my father we and my mother. We had this earlier, yeah. They listen to this type of music. I still listen to him yeah, I listen. when I do laundry. I do. That's what I'm saying, I do, but that's how I got it. Yeah. They, both of them, they will be singing to themselves. Oh. It's a, yeah. Um, and the that's guy how, is, that's what they grew up with. He'll national be, treasure. He will be missed. This yeah. is my, the treasure. issue can never be filled. At all. And last night, I was watching the YouTube video, it, uh, the remix of his song, Baby Me Jawa. Uh, <laughs> that he had with a uh, two face, yeah, it was hilarious. And uh, is it this is a loss of an icon, yes. a legend, yes, in the music, in entertainment in Nigeria? It will be really missed. Yeah, mm. so half the time I don't understand what he's saying, but the music just flows within you, and mm. you just want to. You don't get that kind of music. It. You really get that kind, kind of music, of music. now. <laughs> yeah. Because oh, there's, there's the words, no, the words, no, the words, yeah. the yeah. instruments, and you know he's always going with his uh, trumpet. Yeah, uh, amazing so, man. Yeah. He certainly will be missed. High life star Victor Laya dies at 89 yeah, in Lagos. Age. May he still rest in peace, really. Yeah. Okay, let's go see what other headlines are saying this morning. Oh, we'll go to this day newspaper. Um, let's put this one properly so it doesn't turn. Uh, this day has uh, the big one. Buhari lands in Bornu to mourn 
honor victims, indict community leaders, Zulum 6, new strategy against terror group, again, Boko Haram attacks my degree. And of course, we have uh, another story here. Constitution Review Committee to consider 2014 conference LRFI committee reports. That's on page six of the paper. Uh, of course, we had that, uh, that um, issue of uh, BPE reversal that um, you talked about. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we also have um, Udo Doma receives Japanese government's highest award. Mm -hmm. And that's a picture of him receiving mm -hmm. the award on the front that's page. That's a really big deal. Um, I don't know if you can just flip to that. There you have it. Mm -hmm. um, all smiles and laughter. Uh, celebratory uh, mood. And of course, on the back page, we have insecurity and the enemies within. Do we have enemies within in this fight against insecurity? I know you've not read that, but just the caption, you know, pricks mm. your thoughts. Mm. Yeah, I think we do. Boko Haram's are Nigerians. Mainly, it started from us. So, I, I agree that we have enemies within. Yes, especially... As but as it is not uh, unsurmountable. Mm. We can surmount them. Mm -hmm. Okay. Your thoughts, this Constitution Review Committee? Well, that's quite interesting. I think that's actually a big win for us in Nigeria because one of the things that we've lacked in previous years is the idea of continuity and accountability. So with this Constitutional Review, I, I think there was a 2014 one during... Uh, yeah. Was it? I think it was during a Jonathan, yeah. good luck Jonathan's yeah. uh, time. time. So now they've decided to constitute a 58-man, uh, well, man-woman uh, committee to really look into a review of the constitution, which I think they're le based on all the conversations we've had in previous episodes of this program, there are obviously lapses and uh, gaps that we can actually address. So we, we can't wait to find out what's Can going. they take it on? Constitution review, it's a big one. It's not, yeah. I mean, I'm sorry, it, I'm speaking as a lawyer, I don't think it's that big. It's yeah. literally a booklet. 1999 constitution is a booklet. Yeah. It's full, but, it's, but, but, but you're right, in terms of the gravity of oh, the effect yeah. of the law, it is big, but in terms of trying to get it right, it's actually one of those constitutions I think that if we actually put in the time, 58 man thing, 58 man uh, committee can actually go through it okay. and actually bring um, some salient uh, let me, changes. Let me just add to what she said. Yeah. Um, the review committee, uh, the committee that has been constituted now to look yeah. at the review of the constitution, I feel is the right way to go because, yeah, some cultures feel the National Assembly are playing lip service. But now they say they want to work. It's their work. They're supposed to be our lawmakers. They're supposed to be our representative there. Mm -hmm. And for them to, there's so many reports, there's so many committee, uh, constitutional conferences that we've had in the past, and we've not looked at them. And if, if now they're saying they want to look at the uh, 2014 constitutional uh, committee review report, yeah. and then El Rufai uh, report. report. Mm -hmm. So why not? Let's have a go and let them come out with a paper for us. Yeah, and just, then we decide whether we're going to. Just forward. a reminder, 1999 is the last time we had a major... Uh, and it's been amended and it's, over and over yeah, and over yes, again. Yes. All right. Um, there seems to be a consensus in this studio this morning for that review to take place. Let's see what happens in the coming days. The Vanguard is up for review next. Uh, Boko Haram again is on the front page, apparently. Okay. Uh, that's still what... It is on Boko Haram, but uh, the nation is going with what the rep is, uh, reps are saying to the president. Uh, but the Vanguard is going with Boko Haram hits McDougarie as Buhari visits, runs into storm. Uh, there are a couple of writers to that story. Amotaku personnel to bear arms with IG's approval, that Southwest uh, mm. AGs. Of course, the Constitution Review is here, Shawaree is here, family of 11, many others burnt alive as bandits attack Kaduna village. Uh, let's start with this um, Amotaku. It's very important, though, yeah. because I, I haven't unfortunately read the bill in its entirety, but I know that looking at uh, what the paper has um, published this morning, I just want to highlight one or two uh, 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 provisions of that of the bill. So one of the main things, I, I think I mentioned it the last time I was here on Tuesday, is that there has to be some integration with Amotekun and other um, geographical uh, uh, outfits, yeah, yeah outfits outfit. as well, yeah. to try and integrate them with the national police. And I think whoever you know they, they, at the time nobody took it me seriously, but I'm glad to know that one of the one of the main uh, provisions yeah. of the bill is that the police have to actually be part of the uh, of vetting process yes. of each of the each, each members. Of that, the, will yeah, that will come in. And another thing is that if there are already uh, groups that are registered, renegade groups that are registered as uh, vigilante Very organizations, long. they too will also fall under, uh, they, they are mm -hmm. free to be members of the um, of Amoteku. Mm -hmm. So I think this is actually a positive step because if you, if you recall, what I had said was that 
ultimately, because we're having a geographically uh, uh, divided uh, groups, that somehow the national police can find a way to integrate it so that we don't fall into the risk of being paramilitary uh, fact yeah. factions. So hopefully that's, that will be the case in coming uh, And then coming let months. me just quickly add, even in the bill, mm. it stated that if you reside in any of these southwestern states, mm -hmm. With disregard to where you're from, whether you're Igbo, or you can join, you can join the Operation Amoteko. All right. Um, I don't know if we have time still to get through, uh, but let's uh, take a look at this. Can his parents burial? Don't trigger armed struggle. I pop once, Ami, please. There's been this uh, war of words in the past yeah. days. The burial is tomorrow, the 14th. Um, yeah. so what do you make of this headline, quickly? Well, I... I I've, I've, I've followed that over the weekend up until Monday or Tuesday. And the, like you said, there's been back and front. Uh, the IPOB are saying that we're going to come. Yeah, but if the law of the land is, um, the security agency, the police, are saying, we don't, they're not saying they don't have the barrier. Mm -hmm. But we don't want you to uh, infuriate the society. Mm. They can come as uh, normal people, mm. not come as IPOB members. IPOB has been proscribed in the country. I think whether, that's what the police is basically saying. No, yeah, whether, whether you are on that divide or not. Like stigma or yeah. whatever. Yeah. This, 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 um, yeah. uh, rising uh, sun, Biafra. Yeah, 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 and all of that. Yeah. Okay, um, let's see what the nation has. Reps to Buhari declare emergency and security community leaders support crucial to ending insurgency, says Buhari, 21 killed in Kaduna community. Uh, we've talked about the rhetoric. FRS launches intelligence system to track tax evaders, the folders. I see you nodding your head. So just take that one on quickly. I mean, it's just a quick, just, just a quick mention there. Like I think, and I'm, I'm, I'm having hidden my, it's no secret to anyone that's, that I am very for um, transparency, any kind of uh, digitization of our processes in Nigeria, because that is what, I, that is what can transform us. Um, them having the uh, intelligence uh, software to do that is crucial to us being able to collect revenue and also to, for them to even, even uh, uh, effectively uh, implement the Finance uh, Act. So because of the, I know there are very salient points in the Finance Act that are very specific to, um, um, to, to being monitored, this will act, actually help them. All right, one billion barrels of crude oil discovered, says Selva. That's Minister of State for Petroleum Resources, uh, Timmy Priye Silva. Uh, he's uh, talking big there. Senator Lajaisis Wadumogu, Southeast Governors Adopt Community Policing. That's uh, some of the headlines on the Nation newspaper. At the very bottom, uh, there's something that caught my attention, the one that says, Pope rejects proposal to ordain married men as priests. And then you also have man kills wife. You take that on. <laughs> yeah, okay. Man kills wife. Oh, okay, the Pope. Uh, yeah. Yeah, but... That issue has been a perpetual uh, one when it comes I to the Catholic Church. I guess one of the reasons why it's been, because they, there's been some uh, revelation that some of the uh, ordained uh, priests mm -hmm. that are not married, I've had so many sexual harassment cases with other people's wives and even molesting boys, uh, young ones. So I think that's, that was what brought in... Well, do you ever see a time that, you know, the Catholic Church will say, okay, let's well, not be well, married men as priests? But like I said, cultural doctrine are things that are I supposed to evolve. Evolve, evolve. and I think it And will. then look at what is happening now. Well, so. I, I don't know, but the Catholic Church seems very um, yeah, they're, they're traditional, yeah, yeah, rigid yeah. in certain areas. Yeah. And, you know, when you consider it, it's tricky. Yeah, it's but tricky. they need to consider, I'm, I'm not a Catholic, but the Catholic Church as well needs to consider the, the fame that these accusations, counter-accusations. Well, will, will putting married men stop that kind of behavior? I think, I think it will help, for it, sure. It might reduce it mm. to be as well. At the end of the day, yes, we are, they are priests, but at yeah. the end of the day, they are human beings yes. first. That's one thing, point we have to actually remember. All right. Any other thing you want to talk on quickly before we just take a look at the complete sports and okay. wrap things up? Oh, AKT. Uh, oh, to pass the Amotec yeah. today. Yeah. On Monday, the governor of AKT State promised that this week the bill will be but, but I have a concern reading from another newspaper. Yeah. About three or four of the states have already, the executive Sent. have signed the bill. But they Lagos have. and Oshun are keeping mum. 
for we shall me, see. it's a concern. In the coming days, definitely, yeah. we'll see what's going to happen. Let's just yeah. rush through quickly what's on the front page of the Complete Sports this morning. Leicester suffer and Didi in injury, injury yeah. blow again, ahead of Friday's Wolves game. All right, we also have... Uh, Bassa plotting 93 million euro summer bead for Martinez. Liverpool to offer Van Dijk new 50 million euro five year deal. Um, we also have Yobo's new Eagles assistant coach. That's uh, <laughs> quick, quick. Any thoughts quickly? Yeah, I want to talk about Yobo's new Eagles assistant coach. Mm -hmm. Whatever I'm saying here is not against Joseph Yobo. Yeah. But the, the challenge is. In Nigeria, we have not. We said it across all our sector. We don't have a process system. Just a boy, just a footballer. I think he's about 39 years old, who got retired in 2014. There are other Nigerian internationals who have been in coaching businesses. They are coaching all over the world. I know Amokachi somewhere in Europe. I know Finidi somewhere in Europe. You're not bringing them on board. This we don't have a record of his coaching experience. And you're well, the young shall grow. If you but, don't give the young the opportunity to yeah, but, practice, yeah, but, but, this is a national, this is a national, national incident. Thing. Yeah, it's a national incident. Use, it should, uh, personally, if you, want to grow our if you want to grow our indigenous coaches, why not start them from the underage? We have under 13, we have under 16, we have under 20, we have under 21, under 22. To coach? Yes. We have all those, all those age group teams, I, national teams. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to have to dis um, disagree, but so we can have that discussion off, off camera. <laughs> <laughs> no, say it now. Well, because no, I'm because sure I feel people like, watching, I feel like at the end of the day, for you to be a good coach, you have to yeah. be a good player. You have to know. No, your, no, yes, no. yes. Not you have to at least. No, no, not every coach plays, yeah. but you have to have, have playing experience for you to understand what the player has to go through. Yeah. I feel the best coaches t t t t yeah. generally do. You know what I'm saying is for yeah. your ball. Okay, <laughs> this conversation <laughs> will continue after. I, we have I mentioned, time. Yes. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you for coming on the program. Okay. All right, and that's a wrap for the headlines yeah. uh, from the newspapers this morning. Please go grab a copy, take a look. The vendors need to make some money, so don't just go online all the the time go buy a hard copy and just put a smile on somebody's face today enjoy the rest of your day